The resignation of Justice Tanku Muhammad as Chief Justice of Nigeria comes about 18 months earlier than his official resignation or retirement in December 2023. In this report, TVC News Judiciary Correspondent Selesinia Ira takes a look at the achievements of Justice Tanku Muhammad and challenges he faced while in office. bring you that report uh, subsequently. But joining us now via Zoom is the Senior Advocate of Nigeria and Lead Counsel, Legal Defense Assistance Project, Chino Obiagu, SEN. It's nice to have you join us, Senior Advocate. Thank you and good morning. Nice. Thank you for having me. Great. Now, what came to your mind when you heard that Chief Justice Stanko Muhammad uh, stepped aside from his position as the top man of Nigeria's judiciary. Uh, come again, I, can't, I didn't hear your question, please. I, I said, what came, what came across your mind when you heard of the resignation of uh, Chief Justice of the Federation, Tanku Muhammad? Well, just like most lawyers, you know, we all hit a sign of relief because the, the roller coaster uh, started by the open the letter of the leaked letter of the 14 justices of the Supreme Court to the Chief Justice of Nigeria was of great worry to the legal community because this was the first time we have seen such um, uh, such development that Justice of the Supreme Court will speak out against the what they call a deteriorating situation of justice delivery at their first court. As you know, the Supreme Court is the epitome of justice in this country, and she also is the head of the judiciary. So everybody involved in law practice, in law community, was worried at that development. Coupled with um, allegations of corruption, lists with uh, in, that, in that letter. Secondly, we also know that the Chief Justice of Nigeria himself has been in and out of the country uh, for medical treatment. And there's a, always a tendency that, that if that happens, his associates or his assistants may hijack the situation and begin to um, do things that are not appropriate. So when that announcement was made, I think it was uh, a relief to many uh, many lawyers and judges in this country. All right. Uh, uh, the Nigerians are <coughs> reacting and commenting differently regarding what is going on. But the call from the NBA mm -hmm. that uh, this should be an opportunity to reform the judiciary has been there. Uh, what do you say regarding this? And if this reform is going to take place, if at all it's going to take place, what dimension uh, would you advise it takes? Well, Nigerian lawyers represented by Nigerian Bar Association has always requested for holistic reform of justice administration at that uh, apex level, especially the, um, the reform of the National Judicial Council um, decentralizing his power, the reform of um, that, uh, uh, the system of appointment of judges and magistrates to liberalize those systems so that merit and um, merit should take precedence. So uh, some of those reforms in judiciary, which are very essential in transforming Nigeria judiciary within Nigeria democracy, is what the Nigerian Bar Association has taxed the, uh, the new acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, who we know is pro-reform. So we're expecting that the little time he has, less than two years as CGN, he will be able to write his name in sense of time by undertaking those, those serious reforms. As you know, the Nigerian Bar Association, indeed, many lawyers have criticized the method of appointment of judges and magistrates. Sometimes it has been very, very um, shrouded in secrecy. 
that the no public scrutiny or even scrutiny of people in members of the law community of the candidates that are uh, shortlisted for, for, for judicial positions. And when appropriate or unqualified or people who are not um, appointed on merit get judicial positions, it, it tends to affect the quality of the uh, work they produce as judges and magistrates. So that is an essential reform that must take place. Second thing is the delays in, in handling cases. I think the, 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 the National Judicial Council and the acting CJ should do something about facilitating the speed of proceedings in court so that Nigerian people, public, can have more confidence in the judicial process. So there are a number, a number of reform issues that has been on the table over the years, and I think the acting CJ should take, take up on that. What about the legacy of the outgone CJ and Tanko Mohammed? How, how would you rate uh, his achievements while in office? How will you rate his achievements while in office? Well, you know, it's the, the, the former CJ tried within the, the limit of his um, e health availability. And of course, you know, the contest that the economy was also going down. So. Um, it is very, it is difficult to begin to to rate him against other CJNs who, you know, presided during, if you like, pleasant times. Uh, but and secondly, there was little or no information coming from from the CJN's office to the legal community to be able to understand what was going on. But one thing that can go for his regime or his tenure um, was the attempt to introduce information technology into the Supreme Court uh, by um, improving on these, uh, the, the IT systems and then also in the, the registration of lawyers. Uh, but in area of reform of justice, in area of reform of the National Judicial Council, in area of the centralizing power um, in, the, in, in the NJC, uh, the, the, which, is, which has been a, a constant request by the Nigerian Bar Association most lawyers. Uh, the CGN has not, the former CGN didn't do much about that. Uh, the welfare of lawyers, in fact, within the regime of the former CGN, there was a controversy about um, payment of due, uh, what was due to Nigerian Bar Association from practicing fees paid by lawyers. So a number of issues are, arose, and of course, that's understandable because um, upon taking office, the former CGN took ill and has been in and out of the country. So I think um, history will be kind to him in those circumstances. What can you make? What can you make of the uh, the allegation or the news report that memory disorder was? Uh, responsible for his uh, illness. Do you think memory disorder can excuse him from all of those sins that his, uh, uh, his colleagues accused him of? That he can plead, he can plead uh, forgetfulness about all of those things. Is, it, is, it, is, it, uh, is, it, is there a shelter in law for him in, in this context? Well, you know, uh, I don't have access to his medical history, uh, the, the details about his uh, details of his health. But he has said, I mean, and, and we believe him with all due respect, that he was ill, too ill to continue to perform the duties of his office. Um, that is sufficient to to ask uh, someone stand, holding that kind of position, and indeed any justice of the Supreme Court to stand by. Uh, or, uh, or, uh, or to resign because you need your memory, you need the full faculty of your memory to be able to perform as a judge, more or less, uh, talk less of being a justice of the Supreme Court because you know the Supreme Court is the first court and any decision that comes from the Supreme Court is final. It can only appeal to God. So you need people who are sound, you know, people who are, who are your mental faculties are okay to be able to perform those duties. It is not an easy task. Uh, 
Um, so if indeed, and, and as I said, I don't have access to his medical history to confirm those social media reports, but if indeed he had issue of um, uh, memory loss, then that is justifiable to ask him to, as a, as a chief justice of this country and the leader of the judiciary in the country to, to resign. And, um, and I think we stand by him and every lawyer in this country continue to pray for the former CJN for his quick recovery and um, a, a peaceful and restful retirement. Let's talk about the autonomy of the judiciary as a third arm of government. Uh, everyone has talked about this. And in fact, there was a time that uh, judiciary unions went on strike in this regard. And Nigerians were firmly behind them when it comes to uh, the actual spirit of separation of powers and all of that. Now, if we have to make it work, whose function is it really? Is it the executive deciding, let us give the judiciary exclusive autonomy, as is supposed to be in the Constitution, or is it the function of the legislat legislature making new laws? Try to enlighten us in this regard. What would it make us, or what would it take to have that separation of powers exclusively, the autonomy of the judiciary? Yes, thank you, Robert. That's a very important question. And, and the bedrock of every democracy is separation of powers, the executive, between the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, so that each arm of government can play their role um, you know, with credibility, independently, without interference from other sections. Now, what happened? How do you get autonomy? The, the bedrock of autonomy is financial autonomy. So if you if the judiciary as an arm of government had to go all the time to the executive to, to beg for money, then there's no independence, there's no autonomy. So that's why the Constitution of Nigeria provided for judicial autonomy. And the content of that judicial autonomy is that every income due to judiciary in the budget for a year, the appropriation bill for a year, for a year, must be paid into the coffers of judiciary from the beginning of the year, 100%. Then the judiciary will decide how they spend the money. Any income that comes to the judiciary goes into the judiciary for coffers. Judiciary, the head of court and other hands of judiciary will not decide how to spend the money without having to beg that, that, that um, but, but amount budgeted for judiciary be released to judiciary. So that's what it is at this time. Is it chief judge of the chief judge of a, of a state going to the governor, you know, commissioner for finance for to release money to pay salaries or even to for, for allowances? And of course, when that happens, the just some judiciary will lose uh, its credibility and its independence. So it is the responsibility of the judiciary of the legislature you know, to make laws within the states to clearly define the ambit of judicial autonomy. And it is the responsibility of the executive represented by the governor or the president to ensure that such laws are obeyed. Now, what happened is that in many states, this judicial autonomy law has been made, but the governors of those states have refused to comply with them. And that is the reason why the judicial, you know, um, judicial workers union embarked on the strike last year, which paralyzed judiciary for, for almost six months. And every lawyer stands by Jusu, because if judiciary is, is autonomous, it will improve justice delivery in this country and reduce political interferences into judicial processes. Thank you. In the calls for judicial autonomy is um, also the need for the judiciary uh, to be accountable. We, we saw that play out uh, looking at um, the memo, the leaked memo from the 14, uh, from the 14 judicial justices of the Supreme Court who wrote uh, that uh, memo to the former CJN. We, we, we did see that, uh, you know, coming to the fore, didn't we, uh, Mr. Obiagu? Judicial accountability is one of the things, issues of reform. Uh, not just the Nigerian Bar Association, but civil society groups and the, the lawyers um, community have been asking for, because not just at federal level, but at state levels. Because if money is given to the heads of courts to run the courts, there's a responsibility on them to account to the public, uh, at least the public they serve, 
how those monies were spent. Uh, at, the, at the moment, there is little or no accountability to the public. Maybe there are accountability to the National Judicial NGC, National Judicial Council, or within the state uh, judiciary. But we have always asked for judicial accountability. Um, of course, you know that we have at the state level the accountant general, the auditor general, and also at the federal level. But how far has those uh, institutions uh, been able to demand accountability from judiciary? Um, I think zero. So it is a, a, a thing, it's one of the areas we expect the, the new, the acting CGN to weigh in on and uh, insist that quarterly or annually judicial heads, uh, both at state and federal level, should be able to give accounts of finances given to them. Billions of Naira are released to judiciary every year through the NGC. And I think it's important that we begin to demand that because that will increase public confidence in judiciary. That will ensure that um, money meant for judiciary welfare, judicial welfare or capital projects are not diverted. And, and also begin to, you know, to whom much is given, to whom uh, much is expected. As we are looking, talking about judicial autonomy, the judiciary itself must be able to self-assess its performances and demand accountability. It is an important aspect of the reform we expect from the new regime. Uh, um, are you concerned that the past two uh, CJN have left under the cloud of corruption and it fits into the narrative that our justices are not necessarily above board? Uh, you, you're referring to former CJN, well, Onogen, uh, and, and um, now Tanko. Tanko. Well, with respect to uh, Tanko, the point must be made that he, his reason was ill health. And um, he unfortunately, he's coming within the heels of the memo from the justices of the Supreme Court, and 14 indeed, which is very remarkable. Uh, so we must agree that in, the, in that contest, that uh, there may be a element of allegations of corruption that follows his exit. But having said that, the, it, is, uh, it, it is unfortunate and also unprecedented in history that within five years we, lo we are losing two justices of uh, two uh, chief justices, two chief justices of Nigeria um, in the context of allegations of corruption. That is really very worrying to every lawyer. It's really very worrying in the law community because, you know, corruption in judiciary is something that that destroys the integrity of, judici of, of judiciary and a judicial process. Everybody wants to go to court and get justice. You know, the courts must be the last hope of a common man, common man, whether he's rich or poor. So when there's allegations of corruption, even whether I'm within the judiciary or among lawyers, or prosecutors or the police. It worries everybody in that sector. Um, so it, it is not a good time for us and in, in the, the law community. I think we begin to have a retrospective um, assessment of where we are, um, not just among the judges of that, but also among lawyers, because it is usually lawyers that offer bribes to judges. You know? So um, the Nigerian Bar Association under Olumide uh, Akwata has really taken very strong stride to re, to reconstitute this disciplinary panel of the of the of the Nigeria Bar Association and to demand that any lawyer that is found wanting is debarred. Um, and a lot has been done, and I think in the coming days the NBA will work with the, act, the new acting CJN to ensure that corruption is reduced in the judiciary. But remember that judiciary, Nigerian judiciary, work within the context of Nigerian society. So every society deserves the judiciary to get. But that's not to say that Nigerian judiciary is not going to work hard to ensure that there is um, cleansing, inner cleansing, and, and um, uh, internal um, accountability of judicial system in this country. We all dream that one day the you know, issue of corruption will not be mentioned anywhere in the judicial process. Right. How much powers does uh, Justice Ariwola have in acting capacity to cause the kind of change that judicial workers, the judiciary, and even Nigerians 
are looking forward to. Two powers of Shitos of Nigeria. I know he is um, as an acting CJN. Uh, we all know that he's most he's the most senior justice of the Supreme Court. So by tradition, you know, the, he's to assume that office. Um, so he has all the powers. The mere fact that he's acting CJN does not, you know, reduce any of his powers of the uh, as a, as a chief justice of uh, of, uh, of Nigeria. Um, his confirmation was due according to constitution, you know, within 60 or so days. And um, and I don't think he that deteriorate. I know he is due to retire maybe 24, 24, 25 or so. But he has at least up to two years or more than that to to do whatever what the history calls on him to do. Um, so he has all the full powers of serious of Nigeria because there's no provision of, the, of law. That says that if anybody is acting as an is acting in a position, he has any less power than if he's acting in the full capacity of that position. So legally speaking, administratively speaking, procedurally speaking, he has all the full power of the chief justice of Nigeria. And we lawyers are up calling on him to hit the ground running so he can achieve. Uh, substantial reforms before leaving office. Now we know that Arewa that he's a very activist judge. You know, he's someone that has spoken loudly about reforms, and we do hope that he's going to put action to his words on issue of reforms. Because of time, uh, what your take is in uh, the fact that, um, you know, Justice Tanko Mohammed, um, had, he left, of course, he, he resigned yesterday, and the president, uh, while lauding his achievements in the judiciary, also awarded him the rank of GCUN. Uh, well, that has also kind of, you know, caused divisions, uh, dividing or uh, comments now here and there from the Nigerian bar. Some say, this ought not to have been done now, especially in the line in the light of um, these allegations against him, and some saying it's a non-issue. Uh, when talk, talking about hit the ground running, uh, what what? How did that seem to you? Uh, the president's uh, stance and you know possible uh, investigations of the person of justice uh, Tanku Mohammed. Well, first the first point to make is that every retired chief justice of Nigeria has been awarded. ECON. So it does not have of place because it is a recognition of having occupied that position. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an honor every CJ. Now, the second point is that the, 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 the whole thing about corruption against the former CJ and Tanko Mohammed, we are allegations, remember, and we lawyers believe that, you know, that, that anybody alleged of any his conduct or offense is presumed innocent until proved guilty. Um, no, there's been no institution, no body that have proved that uh, Tanko Mohammed was corrupt in any manner, apart from all the allegations, you know, what is said that he does not provide sufficient welfare and working tools for his colleagues in the Supreme Court. You remember that he's just one out of others. He's just a, a famous in Tabaris uh, in the court of the Justice of the Supreme Court. So his colleagues came out to speak that they, they, they're not comfortable with the way he's running the court. Um, well, that may be a, 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 an indictment on his administrative um, uh, practices, but no one, no court or body has found him guilty of corruption. Now, having said that, and I'm, I'm not undermining or belittling the memo from the Justice of the Supreme Court, it's really very, very important. We can't wish it away. But we must give him a benefit of doubt that he's leaving office because of ill health, um, which is something that, you know, very grave because uh, someone of that stature may not easily, you know, um, claim to be ill when actually he's not. So we must give him that benefit of doubt. Uh, so, so having said that, it should be very uncharitable for any person, more or less a, a talkless of lawyer, to to belittle the achievement of Tanko Mohammed or the position he occupied. I think he, for one thing, he tried as much as possible to delegalize certain things. He tried to let common man understand some of the procedures and try to walk away from tradition. For instance, in the issue of uh, 
appointment of senior advocates of Nigeria, uh, it must be in history that Tanko Mohammed tried to liberalize the procedure and try to make sure that anybody who is qualified gets the slot. For the two years he presided over the Privileges Committee, he allowed 72 plus senior advocates to be able to be to be elevated. And that has that was unprecedented because you know before, like during my time, it can be he can be more than 30 persons by year. So he's tried to as much as possible to, to open up the judiciary, um, the same with the issue of I, introduction of IT. So we must give him credit that within the context of his uh, of his um, strength and his uh, health, he was able to impact on the judicial process as much as he can. Even though some may say that he had the opportunity of doing more, especially when he was going, uh, especially in the area of accountability, because he was taken over from Walter on Morgan, retired uh, CJ, who was who resigned but on allegations of corruption. We hope we hope that at the time he came in, he was going to tackle corruption head on. All right, judiciary, but he didn't do that. Uh, let, let's let's create a scenario. Uh, Justice Sariwala is is still in acting capacity. Uh, does in in this sense, does the president have the the the, the powers to when we're talking about appointing a substantive chief justice of Nigeria, does the president have the right or the powers to appoint someone else apart from an acting uh, chief justice of Nigeria in this in this case? Oh, yes, of course. The president do. Um, the NFA, I mean, similar provisions are made in the laws of, uh, in, in, in the constitution with respect to chief judge, chief judges of the state. The governor do. Um, and that, and that's why, you know, when he's nearing the end of the period, that's still night, I can't remember now, for the for the confirmation, um, the, 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 the lawyers put pressure that confirmations are made, and usually at the, ter, at the ter end of that period, the president can nominate someone else to the Senate for confirmation. But remember that um, the Senate must confirm before the person appointed. And uh, we've seen cases in at the state levels where the state governors will appoint someone else. I mean, it happened across the state and many other states. And the lawyers will protest because the tradition of getting the most senior to head the court is something that lawyers cherish because it preserves integrity for that process. Remember, lawyers believe in hierarchy, um, and, and that's very important. And we do hope that 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 the Arewola will be confirmed when the time comes. Number of vacant seats are on the Supreme Court, about uh, uh, six or thereabout. Uh, the former CJN was said to have submitted a list of potential uh, Supreme Court justices made up of only co uh, justices of the Court of Appeal as against um, learned uh, senior advocates of Nigeria who had heeded a call that they also submit their applications. Are, are we going to see that happen anytime soon, that uh, lawyers who don't have experience on the bench will get to um, you know, be judges or justices of the Supreme Court? Well, we, we are praying that that will happen because uh, lawyers were in practice for many years. I mean, take a lawyer who's been practicing for 35 years and now he's senior advocate of Nigeria, comes with, or lawyer who's been an academic, maybe a professor of law, comes with a lot of experience, you know, not just in knowledge of law, but in legal practice and procedure. I mean, we've seen cases like um, Okashike, for instance, uh, former Okashike, former just of the, uh, um, in this country, we have seen people like layers who came from the academia and joined the bench. We've seen how excellent they performed at the bench. So uh, the issue of having prior knowledge of law of, of the bench is not an issue because people are appointed from the registry, for instance, administrative positions and into the bench, and they perform relatively well. Uh, but having said that, I think there is a, the demands of for lawyers that justice of the Supreme Court should be appointed among their ranks, that is lawyers, uh, has always met with stiff opposition from justices from the bench because you know, when you come to think about it, somebody rises from cover, high court to the cover appeal and waiting to now be elevated to Supreme Court and then you appoint a lawyer, you know, 
into that position. Many judges of the Supreme Court are not comfortable with that proposition. The lawyers were hopeful when in February okay. the CJN, the former CJN wrote the Nigeria Bar Association to submit names all, all right. of those who may be appointed. All right, Chino Biagu, I'm afraid we have to leave you here now due to time, but we sincerely thank you very much for your time on the program and uh, giving us enlightenment and throwing light in, in all of the issues we're discussing. I believe in the coming days we'll still have time to talk more and, uh, you know, create insight into that. Thank you so much.